<clears throat> Next question is from LTDXS. Is inserting isometric holds into the middle of a workout effective? Oh, isometric training fell out of favor, not because of lack of effectiveness. I really think it fell out of favor because lots of machines and pieces of equipment were being invented mm -hmm. and gyms can't sell isometric training because there's not really equipment, lots of equipment for it. But if you go back, some of the best training advice you'll ever get when it comes to building muscle is the pre-steroid bodybuilding, muscle building era. So when you go back and you look at guys like Eugene Sandow, Eugene Sandow you know, John Grimmick, Steve Reeves, um, you know, these guys before steroids really became a big thing, they figured out how to maximize muscle building and strength. Um, without they didn't even have supplements. They didn't even take supplements like you know creatine or protein powders. It was all about their training and nutrition. They were the first that really figured out how vital the central nervous system was in the whole process of getting stronger. Dude, isometric training was a big so isometric training was such a big part of the routine. When if you read comic books up until I'd say the eighties, and I have old comic books because when when I got into them in the nineties, mm -hmm. I'd buy old ones. In the back of them was these Charles Atlas yes, ads I for remember those. and it was you know like some dude on well, you know some skinny guy on the beach with his girlfriend and then some big dude kicks sand in his face and he gets up and gets pumped and then, and then he goes and gets Charles Atlas's routine gets all jacked and goes beats him up but the routine was actually 100% based off of uh isometrics mm -hmm. and they called it dynamic uh tension um isometrics work the Soviets used it quite a bit to help them dominate weightlifting during the, the Cold War. Um, it, it it doesn't just give you strength in the position that you're you're training because it's you're frozen with isometric. It also gives you strength in out, ranges of motion outside of that. It doesn't damage yeah, the muscles like that much. 15 to 20 degrees further. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. also it's also extremely safe and smart when you have clients. That's a big factor. So there's actually companies now, there's brands that have completely uh, branded themselves around uh, I, in fact, there's a there's a, a a company or a brand called uh, Slow Zone, I believe is what it's called, mm -hmm. and it targets the you know advanced age, and it's like ex isometric and extremely and, and slow movement for the yeah. safety. Yeah, for and just by keep creating tension, holding, intensifying intrinsically, moving really really slow or holding still in position. And there's enough research to support the benefits of that. And like you said, it's just, it's fallen out of favor. It's just one of those things that isn't very sexy. Uh, it's, it, it isn't it's very- It's hard to see what's happening too when you see someone do an isometric position. Like, right. Where yeah. are they tensing up? Where is this tension going? Yeah, it's, it, it requires a lot of coaching and, and a lot of, uh, yeah, like you, your understanding of what you need to produce with that. And so to be able to then add more effort to a position that you're in. And I think that, you know, there's even some yoga practices where you're in these poses where you actually now you're really trying to like, yes, you know, dig into that with your with your mus muscles and really feel your way through that mm -hmm. and get more tense uh, with that. But it's it's all it has to come from within, which again, to the safety point is you can, you can really make these things intense, but you can also back off at any second. Yeah. So it, you know, allows that kind of uh, uh, versatility. It's also great for, you know, I used to love to use it in coaching like clients is to, in the middle of a rep of any exercise, whether it be a squat, even a basic bicep curl, or a shoulder press is I would do a light enough weight that I know they can hold it in that position. So we do a light weight, they go through it, and I'd freeze them somewhere in the movement. Mm. And then I'd actually then I go over and manually like adjust their body and then tell them you should be feeling this here, thinking about your core being drawn in here, engaging your glutes, and like really get them to understand like these are all the things that you should be thinking about through this movement. Such a cool tool to use for coaches and trainers, not just for clients and, and seeing results. It told, and you know what's funny to me is that in the 60s and 70s, because bodybuilders actually do, they don't talk about isometric training, but they actually do a lot of isometric yeah. training. Poses. They pose, right? So bodybuilders will practice their front double bicep, back double bicep, rear lat spread, and their you know, ab shot and side chest and all that stuff. And when you're posing on stage, you have to your whole body is being displayed. So front double bicep, they're not just looking at your biceps, they're looking at everything. So they have to you have to learn how to tense everything up and smile. So you have to develop this incredible amount of control. And if you've never tried this, try this. 
Try flexing like a bodybuilder where you're tensing up every muscle. Oh, yeah. Tr- try not to look like an idiot and hold that pose for 15 seconds. Yeah, and try, see try and flex your calves, quads, abs, and biceps and keep your face normal. Yeah. It's and, not and hold easy. It, and hold it for 10 seconds. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. No, not at all without shaking and Hi, looking mom. like it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so bodybuilders do this all the time. And Arnold, in those days, they this was a part of the routine. So what he used to do, so back in the 70s, cardio wasn't something that bodybuilders did a lot of. They just didn't. They lifted weights. They dieted, but what they would throw in to their routine as they got closer to competition was posing, mm. lots and lots of posing. So Arnold would start to do 30 minutes of posing, 45, and he would work up to two hours of posing every single day as he got closer to competition, obviously burning a ton of calories. And if you look at Arnold in the, in the in, when he competed in the 70s, he was very lean. He was looked at least healthy. He looked healthy. He wasn't as shredded as they are today, but the, the drugs that they took back then were – were different, but he looked healthy at least on stage. So this is something you should definitely incorporate into your routine, especially if you're stuck at home. This is actually a, a big component in our at-home program maps anywhere as well. And we put them in there specifically because you don't need equipment and they're very effective.